Welcome to Hey China. I'm joined today by Dirk Alborn. He's the founder and chairman of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. Welcome to the show, Dirk. I'm Martina. How are you doing? Now, for all the viewers who are not there and do not know Hyperloop Technologies, tell us a little bit more about the technologies involved. So the basic concept is actually that we um, we bring the same conditions that an airplane has in very high altitude on ground level. We have a capsule which is similar to an airplane body, a train basically inside a tube. Inside this tube, we create a low pressure environment, just like in high altitude. So we have vacuum pumps along the track that take the air out. That the capsule can move really fast with very little energy because it doesn't encounter a lot of resistance. It's completely automated. It's green because we're using alternative energy. We have solar panels. Uh, along the track on the top uh, and um, yeah I mean so you have very low operational costs which is the most important part because when you look at trains and specifically high-speed trains they're very expensive they're very expensive to maintain actually they're losing money all around the world they're basically subsidized by the government. The Hyperloop is the first system that can be profitable in a very short time span. We did um, an independent feasibility study just um, at the end of last year between Chicago, Cleveland, Philadelphia, and the results were amazing. The company that has been working on high-speed trains for the last 20 years, that's a, that they were able to put the words profit in their report. You know, that's really changes completely the way we travel in 2000. 20, 21, 22, right? So using the latest technology, not cramping people close together, creating a better passenger experience. And by the use of technology, we're able to integrate all of the things that I want to say are now necessary for the future to create a better passenger experience. So even social distancing would not be a problem during COVID-19 and post-pandemic times because we could have our very own capsule and VIP kind of travel arrangements. I cannot wait, Derek. Um, you have been working on this project for many, many years. When can we finally jump on the Hyperloop and enjoy this experience? It's such a fascinating, pioneering work that you are doing. Yeah, I mean, we started back at the end of 2013. Uh, initially, we did a feasibility study to see for ourselves if um, it was possible to build. At the end, we started around 2015 and are now at a point where we have our R&D center in Toulouse, where we're finalizing the world's first complete full-scale prototype. So we have a full-scale capsule. You know, everything is coming together. That's the, the important part. You need to put it all together, that it all works together. So as soon as we're done with uh, integrating the whole system in Toulouse, we will start construction. That was foreseen actually to um, happen beginning of next year. Now, of course, we had a little bit of delay, which is normal because the people couldn't be physically there or not as much, but um, we will accelerate and we have some use upcoming that will allow us to um, hopefully give a date very soon. So any hint already, two, three years, or you really want to wait for the news to be released first? No, I mean, the start will be much earlier than that. Finalizing depends on some other things, right? There's, there's always issues that don't depend on us. So, uh, you know, because you have government agencies involved, the certification. We've been working actually quite a lot on regu the regulatory framework. So, you know, um, which is the biggest hurdle, to be honest with you. It's not so much about um, make a train go really, really fast. It's, uh, it's a completely new form of transportation. So there are no rules, there are no regulations for it. So we worked for a long time with our partner Munich Re and um, were able, that they are able to ensure the system. And um, so, so they, we, we did work together, they said they are able to ensure our technology and are you getting enough political support? What is that the reaction from politicians? Because everybody wants to go into this, the direction of sustainability and ESG and fight climate change. Do you feel this uh, support from the politicians? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 
I'm not so sure if it's the green aspect that they're interested in. Um, I think that's a big problem we're solving for them is a budget problem, right? If you're able to build infrastructure and there's a lack of infrastructure all around the world, even in the first world countries, because, you know, you need funding not only to build them, but also, also to operate them. And in our case, we're able to do this in theory with private investors because you have a return on your investment. We have some countries that are actually actively working on laws to change the way that they're allowing companies to build lines and take concessions. Other countries are very supportive because, you know, as long as they don't have to finance and, you know, they can take their money that they are investing and put it into education or healthcare, right? You're freeing up and resources. That's a very interesting part for them. Let's talk about China as well. I'm sure you're wanting to roll out the system in that country as well. And of course, it's made for such a transportation system with 1.4 billion people, a very vast, rather flat land mass as well. So it would be probably very feasible to have a Hyperloop uh, technology system there as well. What are your plans in that? So we have a lot of uh, partners in China and uh, Chinese investors. The political situation has made it a little bit more difficult, of course, um, working with China. But nevertheless, uh, it's our intent. It was always our intent to be and become Chinese. We're what we call a local company, right? We're global, but we're local at the same time. Um, China is a very important market. So um, we're going very cautious and slow. And uh, you need to find the right partners locally. As I said, we want to make first sure that uh, we are Chinese when we're there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's an amazing country that has amazing resources that is very fast in development, very fast when it comes into construction. So it's very high on our list and we ha we're looking actively at very many different interesting projects. Globally, Hyperloop is not the only player in that area. There's also Virgin. So how are you competing with Virgin in this um, uh, neck to neck race? When it comes to Virgin Hyperloop One, I think it's great because, you know, at the end we are sharing uh, our successes. They're probably the ones that are the closest to us in terms of mindset, right? We, we, we are pushing, we're working really hard day and night to make this new technology uh, successful, so do they. Yeah, I mean, you need to share their success and our success together. Um, in terms of companies, I think we're a little bit different. From what I understand, they are an operator, so it's their interest to build and operate systems. In our case, uh, we're a technology company, so we, we prefer to work with um, future operators, with companies that already know how to build. So we give them the technology to build and, um, and the technology to operate. And they are the ones that really know how to manage people. You are a pioneer, Derek. You're also an entrepreneur and a businessman all together. And you have been compared to Elon Musk. Some people say you're Germany's Elon Musk. What do you say to that, I guess, compliment? And what is your relationship with Elon? He was the one that basically pushed the concept at the beginning. The idea is not new. The idea has been around for quite some time. And he looked back and said, hey, we should do something better than what's out there. Um, here, I thought about this one. Someone should do this. I don't have time because I'm working on Tesla and SpaceX. So that's basically when we reached out and we asked for permission and started working on the project. Since then, we always have been, um, you know, trying to, I don't want to say stay away, but uh, trying to not, you know, we wanted to show that it's us. It's not, uh, it's not Elon. He's not involved in the project. He's working um, with a boring company on a better tunneling system and they're working on uh, uh, the integration with Tesla there. I'm just an entrepreneur that tries to make something happen. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to compare anyone, right? We're all trying our best and we're all working and we're all are trying to balance you know, our private lives and our work lives. And um, a lot of the times, especially when it comes to founders, it's a lot of media hype. Um, so, you know, at the end, when you meet the people and I've met several of them, they're just normal people. They make errors. They, sometimes don't know what to do. 
And I think the key is really to have really great people around you. You know, having those people around you helps you make the right decisions, uh, helps you in difficult times to move forward. So that's really the key. And then really having this mission of uh, making the world a better place. Dirk, thank you so much for your time. Always great seeing you. 